point, there's so much money, liquidity available to these airlines. At this point, the balance sheet stuff is taking a complete second. It, it's taking a back seat to the other fundamentals, honestly. I mean, there's some of these stocks that have zero equity value, as far as I can tell, and yet there's still 4 or $5 billion of market cap because at this point, the market's pricing in effectively just unlimited access to cash, and that's enabled by the Fed. It's enabled by the capital markets. But at this point, um, you should probably expect them to rise and fall. What we like to focus on more so is which ones can get costs out the most, hmm. who can be the most nimble in a changing environment. Yeah, and of course, you know, by getting costs out, we're talking about employees. You know, we're talking about roots. We're talking about all of those things that are macro negative. Um, but as you say, kind of maybe can help them stay financially viable because it's incredible to hear you say you think there's many of them that have zero equity value right now and are only able to have a market cap of several billion dollars because they can access the capital markets or the Fed's backing. So who are those airlines that you think can make right-sizing moves? Yeah, well, I mean, the network airlines, Delta United American, have the biggest ability to cut costs because they've added the most simply, and that's just basic math in terms of how much cost they've added over the last few years. But, um, you know, it's really going to be about who has sort of the intestinal fortitude to actually go ahead and just do it. Who's going to have the best ability to look forward and predict future business travel trends and maybe close 50 to 100 airports if they have to do that and furlough 45% of their workforce, things like that. Uh, I do think that Delta and United probably stand out as having the best ability to be agile. Wow. Uh, but at this point, really nobody really knows. Phil, yeah. what would happen if, as Hunter's describing, some of the major airlines exited 50 to 100 of their airports furloughed 45 percent of their workforce. Do you think there's any appetite by the government for that to happen? Well, they're never going to completely exit more than where they are right now. Look, I think we're at a base level in terms of service. Uh, and is the government going to come in and say we need to add further support? I don't personally believe that there's enough of an appetite in Washington to come up with a second round of bailouts for the airline industry. And in terms of service, we're at that base level. In fact, they're adding back some service right now, but you're not going to see a whole lot of service added in the fall. Uh, fall is traditionally a weaker time of year for the airlines, and they're just not going to be adding more service beyond what we're seeing in July and August. So if there's not really an appetite for more bailouts, uh, Hunter, on that point that Phil brought up, um, what ability do, do these airlines have to further tap the, ca the capital markets? I mean, we had United, for instance, say that they could, they're could they aiming to get cash burned down by the end of the third quarter to about $30 million a day. If, yeah. if they aren't able to do that or if for some reason, you know, they can't do that and they've got to raise more money, what else is there to collateralize in their portfolio? They've done everything. Yeah, some have, some haven't. You know, the network airlines don't have much left. Uh, United was able to very creatively uh, monetize its loyalty program. It would take the other airlines probably at least six months to do the same type of thing. But a lot of these airlines don't have anything left to collateralize. A lot of the available liquidity has been because the Fed has been pumping so much. Who knows what's going to happen after November? And, and quite honestly, this industry, they just keep taking money after money after money. They're never going to be able to restructure. You look at what they did in 08 and 09. They didn't get a dime from the government, and they came out better than they were before. So at some point, this, this government stuff has to stop if they want any hopes of being real businesses on the other side. When you, say, know that. when you say who knows what happens after November, meaning yeah. what? Well, I just mean policy, you know, in okay. terms of just Federal Reserve policy. The Fed is being extremely liberal with in terms of, I don't mean politically liberal, but just liberal with regard to just pumping money into the markets. And there's a lot of debt issuances that probably wouldn't have had much interest from the capital. Sure the markets had the Fed not been behind there to back that, but just like Secretary Mnuchin just said himself. So, you know, that's going to be up to the Federal Reserve, and who knows what that's going to look like after the elections.